Hi there, my name is Dylan Walker. I'm the Advanced Tech Support Engineer for Schneider Electric Telemetry Products. Today I'm going to explain how Workbench 6 software can be used to establish communications between a SCADA pack RTU and a Modbus slave device. The overall functionality of this video is very similar to the Modbus scanner video tutorial I created. However, with Workbench, you are able to perform logical operations on the data being read from a device before passing it on to another device. It's probably worth mentioning that there is a new software being released soon for SCADA pack called Remote Connect that will also have logic functionality and will therefore effectively replace Workbench. But for now, this tutorial should be useful for a lot of Schneider Electric customers. To start, we're going to start SCADA pack eConfigurator and create a new RTU configuration. Uh, all we're doing here is establishing a TCP IP communications between the computer and the RTU. So enter an IP address that puts your computer on the same subnet as your RTU. And remember to change your computer's IP address if you need to. Also, you need to enable Isograph TCP and Modbus client. Also, change the logic target to make sure it's target 5, which is Workbench 6. Once you've done this, write your configuration to the RTU. Once it's written, you can launch Workbench. I uh, just press cancel here and it'll open Workbench anyway. Start a new project. Make sure you select the right SCADA pack. I'm using 535, so I use 500E. Uh, delete resource 2 and rename resource 1 to whatever you want, just because it will give you a warning if you leave it as resource 1. Uh, first of all, type in the IP address of your RTU. Now open the I.O. device of your resource 1 and add an I.O. device. So I'm using TCP Modbus communications, so I'm going to use the NTCP int write I.O. If you're using uh, serial, you would use the MBUS device instead of MTCP. Uh, you can add a comment here just saying what it does, so mine's going to be simple, just write values to slave device holding register. Oh, and make sure that the number of channels is set to two, or whatever you're writing to, because I'm writing to only two holding registers of my Modbus slave device. Now add two more devices, add an MTCP int read, which will read the values of the holding registers from the Modbus slave device into Workbench and make an RTU write real device. We'll write real type variables to a DMP3 point in the RTU, which can then be read in Configurator. Now, I need you to date the parameters for your I.O. devices. So firstly, we'll do the MTCP write box. Change the PLC device address to the slave address of your Modbus slave, so mine is 11 and add the IP address. So mine is 192.168.2.180. Next, type in the holding register number of the first holding register you're targeting. So do exactly the same parameters for the MTCP int read device. And then for the RTU end write device, you just have to type in what DMP3 point you need to write to. Um, you can do pretty much anything that's unused for now, so I'm going to do 101. Next, we're going to create some variables to attach to our I.O. device holding registers. So the one that I'm going to attach to Modbus slave write device for the first holding register, which is the command register of my ATV drive, I'm going to label it ATV underscore CMD underscore write. Uh, I want you to create following six variables. Now we're going to attach the variables to their respective holding registers. So in the right device, we make the first channel go to ATV underscore CMD underscore right, and the second one ATV LFR right. Then in the read device, we're going to do ATV underscore CMD underscore read, and ATV underscore LFR underscore read. And for the RTU device, RTU underscore CMD right and RTU underscore LFR right. Then we need to create the DMP points that the RTU write device is going to write to the RTU. 
So make sure the numbers match the numbers in your workbench program. So mine are 101 and 102. Make sure it's derived and also that your static object type is correct. You can find this in your Modbus Slave device user manual or data sheet. Then write these points to the RTU and build and download your workbench program. Now we're going to test the program that we downloaded to the RTU. So enter debug mode and open the IO devices. Click on the MTCP int write device and write some values to the two holding registers. Okay, so I'm writing a 6 and a 90 and you can see that my read device is then reading that 6 and 90 from the Modbus slave device. So that looks like it's working pretty well but nothing is happening in my RTU Edge device. And that's because it's not really connected to anything right now. So to make sure those values are being passed into the RTU write device, we're gonna create this little program. Uh, this will pass the values being read the Modbus slave by the read device into the RTU write device. And the RTU write device will then write these values into the RTU DMP3 points. So once you build and download that, Go online, debug mode. We're going to write those values again, so 90 and a 6. And you can see they're being read. And then you can see they're being passed into the right device. And then if we go into configurator and point browser and create those DMP3 points that are being written to, once you do a read, you should be able to see that something is being written into the RTU. Uh, mine are incorrect because of the raw scale at the moment. So I'm going to change the raw scale to 0 to 100 and write this to the RTU. Once I've done this, I'm going to perform another read from the point browser and see that the correct values are going into my RTU. Uh, clearly this is the absolute basics of uh, communication from an RTU to a Modbus Slave device, so feel free to play around and see what you can do with it. I hope you found this video useful. If you need more information, please consult the reference manual in Configurator or the help files in Workbench.